I want to talk today about this rotation that's available to us in our shoulders. Or rather, what is the rotation that might not be available to us in our shoulders? Um, the issue is that we spend so much of our modern life in a particular orientation of our arms. And it, you know, it tends to be something like this. And whether this is our, our workstations when, when we're on the computer, it's, you know, it's not too different from using our forks and our knives. It's uh, the driving position with our cars very often. It's how we hold a book or something of that nature. And, you know, over and over again, it's, it, our arms tend to be held in one particular orientation so often that a lot of the tissues around the shoulder, the neck, the shoulder, the wrist, the forearm, they all tend to get um, quote unquote sticky and kind of pulled into one position. They're adapted to that position, which is uh, technically, it's actually quite internally rotated for the shoulder, but there's a large range of motion that we might be missing and we might be losing if we're not careful. Uh, one of the um, effects of this is that in internal rotation, we tend to have more activation of all the muscles up here, the trapezius muscle and the muscles um, even in the neck and a, and a shortening of the muscles in the front of the chest that we might get, it's one of the causes of excessive tension up in the tops of the shoulders and even maybe over time, that sort of slouching forward, that pulling forward of the shoulder, shortening of these muscles that kind of creates that hunched over um, posture that we're all trying to avoid. So it's, and also one other thing is that it can also create a little instability when, as all that gets really sticky, it can create some instability in the actual shoulder girdle and even, you know, less motion in the shoulder joint in general, which, you know, if you go to the extremes might lead to things like frozen shoulder. Um, so we'd like to get more motion in the opposite direction, which would be more external rotation. And, and in general, you know, just a tip that anybody can think of is if you tend to spend most of your time here, find ways to go into external rotation where the shoulder joint rotates out to the, um, well, externally. And so this is what I want to talk about is how do you know what is what and what is neutral. And neutral is great to know so that you know, you know, uh, it's a good gauge to know like, can you go the equal direction or equal amounts in both directions. So um, let us play with this and we're going to look at these elbow pits or the crease of your elbows, those are really good indicators of what's going on up here in the shoulder. So let us play with just kind of noticing how everything links together. So uh, let's start with just taking your hands, let your elbows just kind of rest by your side. Let your ribs be down. You can do nice other things with your pot, with your alignment, get your hips back over your heels. And then we're just going to just flip the wrists. We're just going to flip the uh, forearms and wrists over and over. Supination and pronation of the uh, forearms and wrists here. And, you know, just feel what that's like. So that's one motion. What we're doing is just kind of to see how things are all connected and how the tension gets kind of stuck together and bound up. And then flip the palms up and uh, rotate just from the shoulder. Can you bring your hands out to the side and bring your hands crisscross over each other? Out to the side and across. If you watch the stuff about the uh, scapula uh, in a previous session, try not to pull your shoulder blades way back, but just keep them nice and neutral. So I'm not squeezing my shoulders back to do this. I'm trying to move just from the glenohumeral joint here so this is internal and external rotation. External rotation when the hands are going out, internal rotation as it crosses the center line of the body. And make sure as you do this, try not to let your elbows go out and in, but let them just hang straight down by your sides. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, we're gonna do the same thing, same motions, but now we're gonna extend the arms out a little bit. And so if you reach out of your arms a bit and just, just the forearms and wrists, see if you can, um, in this case, look at this pit of, or crease of the elbow and see if you can just flip the hands over and over and make sure that the elbow is not moving. Try to keep the crease of the elbow, in this case, pointing straight up to the ceiling. Or notice when you reach straight forward, does the elbow automatically sort of rotate so the crease of the elbows, are they pointing towards each other? See where that goes. But see if you can get them pointing up to the ceiling at first. Do, 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 do. It's nice to sing yourself songs while you play. And then after you've done that a little bit, flip the palms up and here's a little mind teaser. Instead of moving from the wrist or forearm, can you move from your shoulder joint and rotate so that the hands turn down, rotate so the hands turn up, but I'm not doing this from the wrist, I'm trying to do it from the shoulder. So the thing that should be moving is that crease of the elbow. I mean, the shoulder joint is moving, but you can watch the crease of the elbow or the point of the elbow rotate around. It's nice to have just a little bit of a bend in the elbow, so you're a little more engaged with the muscles here, and it's not just totally hyperextending. See what that is like, and can you feel the difference? Okay, it's the same motion as doing this, but now you just have the arms extended. How much range of motion can you go? How far can you go over one way? How far can you go the other way? Okay, and then let the arms come down.